Today we have another conversation with our authors. We have Latoya Roberts with us from Tobago. She's a communications consultant. She'll be talking to you about how to make your book sell. So she'll be giving you tips on marketing your book today. Hi, Latoya. Thanks for coming. Hi, Masha, and hi to everybody who's tuning in on the Facebook page. So glad that you could join us for this discussion this afternoon. So, as Masha would have said, I'm Latoya. I have been involved in communications for about 10 years, actually, but um, recently more in terms of publishing my own book and really writing. And this afternoon, this conversation is just to share with you some tips and tricks and things that I did that I believe was really useful and, and helped me really launch my book in, in a successful way and to show you different strategies that you can use that are very inexpensive because we know we're watching the pennies sometimes and you know in publishing a book you think it's such a really expensive venture and especially marketing sometimes will cost you a lot. So today is just to share with you some ideas and little strategies that you can do to ensure your book gets out there to the market that you want. Yes, Masha? Yes, that's all. So I will. Something everybody wants to hear about. <laughs> so I will start the presentation by sharing my screen. And you can follow along. And definitely there's always room for questions as the presentation goes up. So for me, I am a recently self-published author. And um, this is my latest book. It's called Collection of Poems. And in addition to that, I also decided to register and launch a new company under the label of Books by LR. So for me, I would be not only working on my books in terms of self-publishing, but also working with other authors as the needs may be to provide um, services as they build their book and, and do their journey. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to market your book and a very much do-it-yourself strategy where you don't need to pay anyone and you don't need to work too much with external consultants or marketing specialists to get it done. So basically, the first thing anybody should know when you're writing your book is you need to know your audience. Once you have your book written and you have that audience, is one thing when you have the audience on paper, but then to actually market your book to the audience, you need to know who are you catering for. And I'm gonna use very clear examples. For me, when I decided to do my book, my book was catering to young women between the ages of 25 to 40 years old, who love to travel, who love to talk about women issues, and who also want to build their, their self-esteem and their self-motivation. And for me, that becomes important when I decide to craft my marketing strategy, because then I know exactly where to find the persons. I have the age group of the people that I'm looking for. I have their common interests and their common interests will help me with hashtags and words that I need to use when I'm marketing my book. So definitely when you have your book and you're ready to get it out there, you need to answer these questions of who is the person exactly? And it, it shouldn't be too broad. It re, try your best to be very specific. Make sure you understand age. Make sure you understand demographic. Make sure you understand what they like or dislike. Make sure you understand if your market is going to be on social media or if your market are persons who actually like to go into a bookstore and purchase books because that will de define how exactly you market the book. So knowing the audience is very critical and I believe that is the first step. Once you know your audience, then it, it comes to a broader picture of now knowing your market. There's a slight difference between knowing your audience and knowing your market, and I'll try to explain that. Your audience is that narrow target of who you know going to purchase your book. But within that audience of knowing who's going to purchase your book, those persons will exist in various markets. So for example, if you are writing a book that is suitable to, to children, then you need to understand where children will want to get your book. If it's at the bookstore, if it's placing a few copies at a school library, and then that being the prompt to tell parents to go get the, the own personal copy for, the, for your child. Also, if it is that your market is only persons who are into digital books and they're only going to buy it on Amazon and read it on a Kindle, and they're not interested in any soft 
copy or any paperback or any hard version of the book, then it probably won't make sense for you to print the book, but rather just market it as an ebook. Also, you may need to understand the, the purchasing power of your, your market because if you price your book is at to a high rate, then person's not going to purchase the book. And if the book is a self-help book for low-income mothers, then you, you can't be pricing that, that, that book too high. You definitely need to do a little bit of market research to know your market. And for me, when I published my book, I decided to take a few excerpts from the book and share it with my friends to get their feedback. And I asked them, you know, would you buy a book with this content in it? And about how much would you pay for the book? And I also asked them, would you prefer to have a soft copy of the book? Or do you want the book in paperback? Do you want it in hardback? It was really important to ask these questions because all of these help you to decide who is the market that, that you really want to, to reach for your book. And in terms of also understanding your market, especially I'm, I'm sure I'm speaking to a Caribbean audience here, we have this challenge of thinking that Caribbean people don't read anymore. So you need to make up your mind and, and know when you're going to write your book, making sure that you understand your Caribbean market, understand your Caribbean audience, making sure you know who exactly will purchase the book versus who will look at the book, pick it up on the bookshop and say, it's a nice book. They will skim it through it, but they probably won't purchase it. So you definitely need to make sure and know the type of market you are in for your book. And lastly, in terms of knowing your market, you need to decide, you know, if this book is going to work well for uh, uh, my, for example, the, the book that I the collection of poems, definitely spoke to persons who are into poetry, who are into spoken word, who want light reading. And that's, that's a very small market as opposed to the, to the broader catalogs of book under fiction or nonfiction. So you definitely need to do some research to make sure that when you have wrote, written your book, you understand the market and you understand the needs of that specific market. So far, so good, hopefully. And then for me, I think it's important to expand your network. A lot of the time persons write books and they just want to focus on a set narrow target audience or they're not willing to join writers group or join writers clubs, go to a few book readings, um, join a few sites that could help you promote your book or promote the interest of writing and publishing, etc. Yes, we understand self-publishing is you doing the work all by yourself. So you, you don't have a publishing company to make that network for you. So therefore you have to do it yourself. So for me, it was linking up with Marsha through, through Caribbean Book Foundation to expand my network that way. It was me also joining other Facebook groups like Caribbean Writers. It was me also liking um, Goodreads and creating a Goodreads profile and listening to what's going on around the world as it relates to self-publishing and writing. It's really sharing in that network and expanding it to make sure that when you launch your book, there are people who are gonna like, tag, share, follow. They may not always purchase, but just a like or share will actually help your book get marketed along the way. So definitely aim to expand your market and your network. And once you have expanded your network, this is where the hard work really starts. Understanding how much money are you going to spend? We are all self-publishers. And when you most, most times when persons doing self-publishing, they're doing it as a hobby. They don't have a lot of money invested in, in the book that they are putting out. And as a result of that, you have to be realistic about what you can spend. If you want to go into a big full marketing campaign, it could cost you a lot of money. So you need to be understanding of where's your limits and what you can spend on marketing this book. So you definitely need to make sure and do your sales projection, knowing that if I sell a hundred copies of this book, would I at least break even or would I cover my initial setup course and the printing course, et cetera? And what part of the marketing course can I do without? An easy way to get around this is definitely consider partnerships and collaborations to reduce costs. Partnerships mean that you may partner with another author 
to, to do some marketing stuff together, or you may find a publisher that you don't want to sign on to a full long-term contract, but but some some sort of commission sharing or, or some way that might be mutually beneficial. Or it could mean that you probably want to partner with a, a, a branding company or somebody who has a product that is in line with the message and the theme that is going on in your book and you would like to market on behalf of them. Like recently, I saw my friend, he, he's doing a lot of self-help books to motivate young people, youth, talking about the millennial mind. And then, you know, he has collaborated with like an eyewear company. And it, it's so strange that his book is talking about the millennial mind and the technology and all of that. But yet he's now putting that book product into the partnership and branding with an eyewear company. So he does a lot of advertising and, and stuff for them and tie it in line with his book. So likewise, if your book is on cooking or on home and gardening, you may want to partner or collaborate with some home and garden store nearby in your community where you can align um, the products and the services and the idea with that you have to also assist and promote them in their work. So there are many ways that you could really blend this partnership and collaboration. You just have to decide how it works for you. For me also, um, there's a magazine that I work with from time to time called Hello Beautiful World. So I've partnered with them in terms of promoting my magazine and in terms of me continuing to write content and, and, and boost their work. So there are many options for partnerships and collaborations. You need to decide which one works best for you. And then there are still many free platforms out there, not everything you need to pay for. So there are persons with millions of to know about an author's journey, about the messaging in an author's book, etc. So you could definitely find some podcasts and um, a good place to find persons who have podcasts is simply on Twitter or Instagram and randomly follow them, see what they're talking about, send them a message that you publish this new book and find out if, if you can do a 15 minute a 30 minute segment on their podcast and most of them they are really willing to. Then there's also blogs for to do a book review for you or the content and you could generate it and just add. And then I guess because of COVID, we're all doing webinars now, right? So definitely you as an author could have your own webinar that you host for yourself or you could partner with somebody else who is already have a platform and already have webinars and, and need presenters and definitely present your, your book ideas there. And there are always national libraries and in most countries using the library to promote your book. Most times um, actually free once you have a good relationship with the library. And most times once you go into the PR department, they're willing to at least give you a book display area or they're willing to let you do like uh, a story time or you come and read to an audience. Anything like that, that could work. And most times I definitely think the National Library Services are very free or at a very minimal cost. And then there are also book clubs. Some book clubs you have to pay to join. Others are really free and open. Just depends on what is the overall need for the book club and what, what is your goal, what you're trying to achieve there. But definitely if you write in books, I, I do think you need to join a book club also. And then for other platforms that you may have to pay for, it's definitely good to ask them what is the bundle or what is the package. It's not that you're discrediting person's work or trying to beat them down, but you, you want value for money. So most times it's about negotiating and asking what is the package that could be offered? What is a bundle price? If I decide to commit to do three webinars on your platform, over three months, can it be reduced as opposed to if I only did one webinar only and never came back? I, I think simple conversations like that could really help the marketing process along. And you, you definitely need to be consistent, especially if you're gonna pay on a platform, make sure you're consistent about the messages and the ideas that you want to sell to promote your book. But definitely all in all, the first four things that I mentioned are really free 
or very minimal course. So try those. And if those don't work out, then um, consider that, that you have to pay additional money. Uh, important point I want to highlight is that no matter which platform, what medium, what channel you use, make sure that you have a clear story to tell about your book. I think sometimes people are great at writing their books, but then when it's time to sell it, they're not a good seller. Maybe they're not people person or they just don't have that, that, that voice to be out there or they can't craft their story well. So my advice is if you need help, sit with somebody and flesh out your storytelling ideas for whatever messaging that you want to put out there for your book. Sometimes people have great books, but the book didn't sell well because maybe the, the author did not package the, the, you know, that synopsis of your book, those, those core points about the book that you want to sell to people. It wasn't properly packaged or it, it wasn't appealing to the audience or the market. So make sure that whatever platform you decide to use, ensure that you have your storytelling map down, make sure it's really interesting, make sure it pulls out the core elements of your book, the key things that will grasp your audience into enjoying your book and use those points as, as the strong points to keep the promotion of your book going. So definitely take some time and decide what is the story that you're going to tell about your book on, on whichever platforms you choose. There are times when persons will um, decide on an idea and then during the process of marketing the book, you want to change the idea. I'm not too sure if that is good. Take the time from before, plan ahead, make sure you have your messaging, your clear story about what you want to say and tell the public about your book and be consistent and stick to that. And once you have a good story telling plan for your book, and it's, it's really generic and useful, most times you won't have to change it because the, the content is done and it, it speaks to exactly what your book is, is delivering at the time. And um, obviously for you as a person, people like to see the face behind the book. Let's be honest. Um, sometimes people read books, but eventually they flip to the back or they look for the bio profile of the author if they're really pleased and they really like the book messaging. So you as the author need to have some standalone events that tells you as the person behind the, the book, which is what you are promoting. So as the author, you need to consider doing a few book readings. I know because of COVID, there are certain restrictions as it relates to gathering, but that's okay. A lot of people are having book readings online now, actually. So you, you can do that. I had four book readings when I launched my book on, online. Then once you still have a physical book, there's always the idea of having the book autographed is, is always nice. Again, right now, because of COVID, sometimes book signing might be difficult, but um, still try innovative ways to, to do it. But definitely that personalized touch to your book um, it is really a good selling and marketing point for your book. If you could have people purchase the book and you sign it same time, that is, that is really a nice selling touch for your book. So you should definitely keep that. Book pop-up shops always work. If it's at the mall, if it's a grocery store, if it's at some kind of community fair event, as an author, you should still always try to do a few of those as much to reach your audience to be on the ground to see who your audience are. Because as much as you want to put your book into a bookstore or you have it on Amazon, et cetera, it's still always good sometime for you to see what's going on with your book and actually being on the ground and selling the book yourself. If you're into bigger events like conferences and, and um, stuff that happens at the library, again, according to the niche of your book, there might be opportunities for you to attend writers' conferences, or different library events and presentations, definitely as the author, you should show up and, and do those things. I know certain libraries have like different months where they feature different authors. So you should definitely make an effort to do that because it really helps to promote your book. And as I said, people like to see the face um, attached to the book many times. And as I said before, there, there's always book displays. If, if you could afford to do a really nice branding package 
that allows you to mount a really extraordinary display that's really good with a lot of um, flyers and pop-up stuff and memorabilia. Those things are really good. If you cannot afford that, you could just do simply smaller posters or smaller flyers or just simple excerpts from your book. Can you have it out on a display board? All of those things. Um, most libraries will have spaces where they have mounting boards where you could mount your stuff, etc. So it's just about printing your material and having it there. Likewise, most bookstores will have some kind of display area. Let's not have the display boring. Really make some effort to, if it is that the bookstore allows you to use the display for a month, make sure that the rotation that your book is there for the month. Don't just leave it up to the bookstore only to do it, but check it and give them the ideas of how you think your book should be displayed. Um, because according to the theme of your book, you might want a natural, if your book is about nature and outdoor, you might want a natural feel. You might bring in a few palm palm leaves and really make that setting around your book. If your book is about stuff and science, etc., you may want the look and feel of the book display being slightly different. So really make an effort to, to really put that personal touch onto your book display. And I think that will definitely gravitate people to understand what is the story, what is the angle that this book is trying to promote and draw audience to your book. So definitely in this day and age, you need to have a social media strategy, I believe. There are some very old school authors and um, publishers that don't do social media. That might be their trend and their pattern, but I do believe in terms of a self-published author, especially if you're on limited budget, you need to have a social media strategy because that is how you're gonna reach the widest mm -hmm. audience, I believe at this point in time with paying the, the least amount of money. If you're not tech savvy, don't worry yourself. You don't have to have 10 different platforms. Just choose one or two and let that work for you. In terms of the strategy, decide if you're gonna be on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, are you gonna use YouTube videos? Are you gonna do LinkedIn and sell yourself as a professional writer and author? Choose the strategy that works best for you and one that you feel comfortable with. You definitely don't need to post 300 times, but you definitely need to be posting more than once a week. So you need to decide on that pattern and rhythm that works for you. What I found in the Caribbean is definitely Facebook and Instagram works, not so much Twitter in the Caribbean landscape as it relates to marketing your books, etc. We're not quite there yet. But once you have a vibrant Facebook page, once you have a vibrant Instagram page and you're really building nice content, um, it's fine. Ways that you can build content, for example, if you decide to partner with an influencer, sorry, if you decide to partner with an influencer and um, that person is able to read two, three quotes from your book or tweet about it or post photos with them reading your book, and, and tag you that that goes a long way. Also, if you are willing to yourself as the author, build a storyline where you want to start from your writing process. You want to start from the scratch and you want to document every time you wrote something and you toss the paper away or the, your writing spots that you go to free your mind as you wrote the content for the book so that the writers could build a story around them so that you're not posting only the finished product of your published book, but you want to map a whole storyline. You can do all of that on your social media pages. Um, the social media, you can also focus on video content. If you want to get testimonials from persons who read your book and hear what they have to say about it. If you yourself want to be reading excerpts from your book and post short videos about it, all of those things are fine. But you just need to decide, as I said, what is your storytelling strategy and what you want to do to, to promote your book using social media. I know a lot of the time persons may feel that they're not tech savvy and they don't have time to be posting a lot, but you definitely need to post more than once per month. Yeah, I think once a week, um, minimal, and you will be good with that. Try to definitely have an engagement with your audience. Try to really get them involved in your book, understand the stories, understand the messages around your book and keep a conversation going on social media about your book and you will be fine. You don't have to spend a lot of money on social media marketing. 
Um, so right now, social media is one of the cheapest platforms in marketing. Once you have a minimal budget of maybe five US dollars and you sponsor that for two days, you will reach a reasonable amount of reach and see how it goes. Also, once you belong to some of these book clubs on social media, the different groups, et cetera, uh, that could also help promote your, your, your book. So definitely, I think social media is a writer's friend. It's an author's friend, especially if you're a self-publisher and you don't have a, a big publishing company to do the full marketing scale for you. Definitely use social media as your, your friend to get it done. But we are still human beings who love social interaction. So face-to-face -face still works. Have a few copies of your book and you go to the community and you talk to persons about your book and see who is willing to buy. That is always a wonderful strategy that still works. Um, people still like to have conversations. People still like to chat. And um, the same way how you have to motivate somebody to purchase a car is the same way how you have to sell your book to someone. So just have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone and um, invite them to get a copy of your book. It could be whether you're after church, it could be after the school PTA meeting, it could be at work, wherever you are. Once you're an author, you need to know how to sell your, your work, so know how to sell your book, and simple face-to-face -face conversation still goes a long way in terms of trying to reach that audience to market your book. And um, because of technology, we still have these one-stop shops, which are like cheaper platforms that you can use outside of a publisher. Everyone is um, pretty much comfortable and know about Amazon, but you can have your books done through KDP. And I put select in brackets because for those who decide to sign up for that special subscription where your books market for between three to six months, there's that option. Or you could just have your book itself on Amazon and you could definitely market it there. If you don't want to do Amazon, there are other platforms that you can use, like Splashwords, they can help you also market the book. There's also Lulu, there's also Etsy. These are other options that you can choose and they are at minimal cost to get, to get your book out there to the respective audience. But I think for most persons, they are very much comfortable with Amazon through KDP, so that takes to win. But any of these platforms are really nice one-stop shops that could help you still also market the book and reach the audience that you need to. But at the end of the day, you definitely need to know your analytics. You need to know your numbers. You need to measure your performance. You need to know, oh, based on all the strategies that I've shared, based on all the examples or techniques that I've shared, you need to decide what is working for you and what is not. So simple ways to do this is to have simple spreadsheets so that you have an average of how much book you sold in the month of January, how much books did you end up sell when you did the pop-up shop, or how many books did you sell by people clicking to Amazon and downloading the e-copy or printing the book? How much books did you sell by leaving it by a bookstore? How much books did you sell or how much follow-up calls did you get after you did the reading at the library? You need to be able to have that simple spreadsheet to map to see which of the strategies are working for you. If you realize that when you do Facebook sponsored posts, most of the per persons who inbox you for more information about the book end up purchasing the book. And when you did a, a visit to the library, nobody did, well then the social media strategy is working for you. Or if you realize that most of your books got sold through a pop-up store at the grocery as opposed to a pop-up store at the mall, then you know you need to schedule a few more pop-ups at the grocery because that is when people purchase in your book. So definitely have that spreadsheet working for you. Um, if you're doing a lot of online marketing, like to Google Ads, etc., then you definitely need to check your Google Analytics. If you have a website to see how much persons are hitting, how much persons are really going into your website and opening the book. If you, you have like a preview of your book on your website, check to see how many, how many persons are previewing versus how many persons are hitting the checkout button and actually purchasing the book. Likewise for Facebook, again, when you sponsor a post, see how much persons are really engaged, how much persons are clicking to request a copy, 
how many persons are calling you after you sponsor the post for a week to order a copy, how many of the persons fill out an order form, those sort of things. You really want to check your numbers because you don't want to end up marketing on five different platforms and you wasn't checking the numbers and you're not too sure which of the platforms performed best for you and where most of your sales came from. If you're doing Amazon, they will normally give you monthly sales report. So you could map that to see if the Amazon sales are working for you. And um, you could always have simple questionnaires on your social media pages also as will ask persons where do they prefer to get the copy of your book, if it is that they're going to purchase it online, if it is that they want to meet you um, face to face in person, if it is that they're willing to go to a bookstore to pick up the copy, have those things um, on your website or on your social media pages. Because if, if you launch one of this on your social media page, a simple questionnaire, a simple poll on your social media page, and if 90% of the persons responded and said that, they want to get your book at the bookstore, but yet you refuse to have books at the bookstore and you only have your book on Amazon and your target audience have no credit card, then how are they going to get the copy of your book? If most of the persons say that they want to go to a bookstore to purchase your book, then my advice is reach out to the local bookstores and put the books there. Likewise, if when you do your survey, persons are saying that um, they only want to purchase your book during Christmas time, then you need to be smart and launch your book during Christmas time because you know it will sell then because people will make it as a holiday gift as opposed to if you launched it way earlier and nobody purchased it until Christmas time. So do some research, know what your numbers are saying because that will affect your sales and influence the way that you, you put your book out there. So basically that was our discussion today. Just to recap, what we spoke about was one, getting to know your audience. Once you have a clear idea who is your audience, then that audience filters into a larger market. So getting to know your market. In the process of getting to know your market, you also as a self-published author or somebody new into the business, definitely need to build your network and building your network means not only physical network like book clubs or knowing publishers, et cetera, but also that social network around you by being a part of some of like writers groups or book club groups, et cetera, so that you could build your presence there. You definitely need to ensure that as an author, persons know the face or they know the person behind the book. So definitely have as much balance in person events as much as social events on social media, et cetera to promote your book and um, definitely it's the face still works so that personal touch of, of you trying to sell your book to someone is still very convincing in, in most cases and even if persons don't want to purchase your book they might even still give you a donation actually towards towards your work so and it's definitely even, and Latoya, they might even recommend you to somebody else who yeah I, I, I have found that as well or they might say you know they might call you another time and say, I'll buy the book as a gift for somebody else. Exactly. So I, yeah, so I think that face to face, that uh, people remember you and they, they think about you and they say, okay, let me see if I can give her, give her a sale somehow. Definitely, yeah. definitely. It's really, that's uh, really good. And in this day and age, you definitely need to have, well, this is my opinion, left to be corrected, but you definitely need to have a social media strategy, especially if you're self publish author and you don't have a large budget and you don't have a publishing company to help you market your book, social media is an easy way to, to start up your marketing campaign and your efforts to, to reach out to persons and then you can move to other, other forms of reaching out. And then lastly, um, it's all about you as a person and how you feel about your book. I'm being very quite honest with you. Things sell based on your your approach and your attitude towards it, I believe. If you're a go-getter and you want to really jam this hard for the next three to six months and push your book really hard and far, it will go a long way. If you're a more cool, casual, layback person, you just launch it on Amazon and you leave it alone, then most likely it won't get much clicks and hits and, and much um, inquiry about it and, and communication around it. So you need to know 
how much you're willing to give, how far you're willing to go out there, and how much you really time and effort and resources that you are going to push for your book. And then at the end of the day, my hope is that, you know, even if you do have a passion for writing, et cetera, which is wonderful, there still needs to be some budget line elemented because it's time, resources, it's talent. So you need to definitely have a budget and know how much you're willing to put out on this book and how much money you're willing to get back into, or even if you want to break even, or what is the cause or the impact that you're going to make on your book. There still needs to be some way of measuring or quantifying what you are doing and the impact that, that, that it will make. So yeah, Marsha, you can now just load me with the world of questions. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So I absolutely love the presentation. I think a lot of people think that when they finish writing this book, that's it. But when you, if you are a person marketing that book, well, that you just, you have just begun. Because you really have to push that book and you have to make sure that book gets out there. I really like your point about social media. A lot of people are not um, social media inclined, but it definitely is, uh, as you say, it's a free way to push your stuff out there. Um, I have found that I like to, I don't post all the time, but um, Facebook has, um, you could you could set it to post on a certain day. So I use that. Mm -hmm. Once a, once, a, yeah, once a social media account has that, I will be on you all the time because I will take a, a one Sunday and I will post, <laughs> I will set posts for the whole week. So when also I'm on my phone, I'll be like, um, and it triggers my memory now that now when it posts, it, it notifies you that it posts. So I'll check now and I'll go on the internet. So it's not like um, when it now came out and you just have to just be, every minute you have to be on social media. You can be smart with social media and post and schedule your posts and then check back. And I also um, I also use it with Amazon. Like if um, I have a free book day, then I will set the post on Facebook for the day. And sometimes I, I forget the days <laughs> and it's only when the post comes up, I said, oh my gosh. But I take the time when I'm doing it and I go on the different platforms and I set it and I said, so it's a lot of time. So tell me yeah. about yeah, tell me about your book. You um have you been writing another book? Yes, I am okay. working on stuff. I don't want to disclose too much, but okay. I'm hoping 2021 that I at least put out two more books this year. Okay, By the middle of the year and the end of the year, I'm looking at. And uh, yeah, I think once you're in a writing mood, once a writing book hits you, you just keep writing. <laughs> And then the foundation of the, the platform that you, you already have a foundation, so it, it would be easier to push things on. And I know you said the, the, two, the two that you found for Caribbean was, was it is Facebook and Instagram? Yes, yes. yes. You, um, um, that's the two main audiences that I think really get the pull within the, within okay. the market that I'm looking for, yeah. Okay. Have you had any business success with Instagram, with Instagram, with LinkedIn? I know LinkedIn, yes, actually, I have been able just to preliminary discussions with different authors and stuff, nothing firm yet. But I think LinkedIn is a platform that you need to understand. Yeah. And I find a lot of Caribbean writers are not on LinkedIn, actually. Mm -hmm. A lot of the Caribbean writers, are, and I found them on Facebook, but mm -hmm. not on LinkedIn. So I found LinkedIn is more for just trying to connect with some persons in North American market and some persons in the European market, but I haven't really built doing anything with them as yet, but the connection is there. So once it's established, maybe in the future, I can look at something there. But I, I just don't find the Caribbean Present. audience and the reach that I want. It's I find it on LinkedIn. Okay, and what about Goodreads? Have you had any much success with Goodreads that work in there? Um, I think Goodreads for me is just information gathering. I just look at what people are doing. I look at the trends, the, the, the comments, the, the community, the different chats. So I just gather a lot of information and tips, tools, and those. I am not an avid contributor. So I don't post much, but I go there and I read. I read and I see what people are saying and I see what people are doing. And that works well for me at this stage. Okay, because I know those are those are um, um, good reasons. Something that's always recommended. 
I know I've read yes, definitely. as well to um, Goodreads pulls, um, once you have a Goodreads profile and you, it, if somebody types your name into um, um, Google, it, or it comes yes, up. Yes, it pulls up. Yes, yes so it does. I can even, even if it's just for that, some, there's something with that Goodreads algorithm that when you, when you, once you have a profile and somebody's looking for you, that Goodreads profile comes up on the first page. I notice that with most, um, sometimes your website will come up, but that Goodreads profile will come up. Comes up, so, yeah. yeah I, I think that, that too. Yeah, so I sometimes, so I said, even if it's just for that, just register with Goodreads, put your information on, and just to get that that coming up, that's that's something you need. I, I totally agree with you. And not, not only Goodreads, I think as a writer, you need to cement yourself in certain spaces. You, you just have right. to. You just have to. If, if, if you're going to make it, um, yeah, why not? And I, I know, and that's why I know it has some writers who don't necessarily like to be out there public because they already have a publisher or they're probably just okay with always setting their stuff in bookstores. But I think the industry and the market have moved a lot online also. So you, re you really need to be able to have these profiles placed out there and, and let people know who is the face behind the book. That is I think true. that's important. That's true. It's like, it's like the old time yellow pages. Because <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. I, say, I said, if your readers are, you may not be interested in Twitter, but if you have readers on Twitter, they are looking for you on Twitter. And if you don't have a profile on Twitter, then, then you don't exist. So I always say, exactly. I try to, I, I, I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not a somebody in social media posts a lot, but I will, I'll have, I'll open an account and make sure it's updated with all my information so that you can, if, if that is, the, that is the platform that you like, you can contact me. But if you, if you check and then when I, on Sundays when I'll just go through and I'll post and I'll say, okay, I'm making sure I'm keeping it updated. But um, a lot of time it's not so much, I, I realize it's not so much about the writers, it's about the readers finding me. So if it is, some people say they hate Facebook. Oh my gosh, they hate it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Facebook, if somebody's searching for you, they're not going to go on, they're not going to look for your platform. They're looking for their platform and then they search for you and you're not there. So then they'll find another Caribbean out and buy their book instead. So... It really, as you said, is that you, it's the, this is the era for it. And you just have to, you just have to register. Nobody's saying yes. you can spend a whole day on Facebook or on Twitter or on, um, on Instagram. Just, but let's make sure you have a presence there. So yeah, I, of course. I, I definitely don't encourage anybody to just sit down all day on social media. No way. You need to manage it wisely. Besides, if you're sitting on social media whole day, you won't have time to write wonderful books. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I know we were, you were talking about KDP. Um, but my, I use a lot of like the free days and the discounted days and stuff like that. Is that something that you have found works well to promote your book? I think, yes, it works well, but it depends on the type of book. I found that when I do more general type of books, KDP work well. But when I do a very Caribbean theme book, I honestly don't find Amazon is the best platform to promote it. Because okay. I still find Caribbean people still just want to go get their book in a bookstore. Yes. So it, it depends on the on the on the type of book, honestly. Yes. Honestly speaking. Because I, I found a lot of my more Caribbean themed book, mm -hmm. they do well better with face to face and in a local mm -hmm. bookstore. But a more general fiction book, um, those work well on Amazon. So that's why sometimes I will use KDP Select, and other times I will choose not to because it's not going to help me at the point in time. Okay, yeah, I find that. Um, so knowing your audience and knowing your market that, that is knows, important. Okay. And getting that reach, uh, and um, if you are an author, just think that, that it's a foundation here just to contact all the bookstores. You might think, oh my gosh, I have to contact all these bookstores. But the thing is, you will have that contact for, another, for, your, for the next book. So it's, um, yeah, that, um, and if you're self-publishing, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work and you have to do the groundwork and 
but you're, you're networking and you're making contacts. So if you had one um, piece of advice for marketing your book, what would it be? Um, because you're self-publishing, set a budget, set a target. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to me it's like, once you have that, once you have a budget and a target in mind, then you will know how much work you want to put in and where you want to reach. If you don't have that, then it will just be guesswork. It'll just be guessing, okay, should I pay for this radio interview? Should I pay to sponsor this ad post? Should I print like 200 flyers? Mm. Just set a budget from the start so you know how much money you're working with. And when you reach that limit, hopefully you reach your sales target with it. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's me, set a budget. Yeah, you really have to set a budget and um, don't spend too much. I was sorry, but don't spend more. Don't think, okay, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to do this. That's, take it easy if that's what you're going to spend. Then when the book sales start to come in, then you use some of the sales and you, you put exactly. it. Exactly. So at least you like I have a friend who she decided that, you know, she was going to market her book with, with you no know, zero dollars zero cents. She wasn't gonna set no budget. She wasn't gonna do no any social media ads. She wasn't gonna do no flyers, no posters. And her strategy works well for her. She just basically targeted the schools. So every PTA meeting she showed up. That was just her strategy. The PTA meetings, and um, she will push that book at all PTA meetings. PTA meeting was once a month, and um. It was a nice catchment of parents, the working professional, the not working professional, and that strategy worked for her. And if at every PTA meeting, she would sell maybe 10, 15 copies for like six times she did that continuously, she was okay. And then from then, she, her marketing really started to build. Okay. Because she got a few, she got a few slots in between to talk about the book now and then. Mm -hmm. And that was her strategy. She said she just really didn't have money to do anything else. And she just wanted to focus it. And that worked for her. Yeah, that's a wonderful. Like right? she she actually found, as you said in the beginning, she found her market. She she targets and she targets any markets and she just she worked it. Yes. And, and it and it's a lot of patience as well. Right? You work it and you work it until. <laughs> Until, Until yeah, time, it's a lot of patience. Okay, well, I think you have given as so much advice. You've given so much advice. <laughs> so thank you so very much for speaking with us. Um, what we do is, I mean, this is pre-recorded, so we are going to ask you to hold on to be online. So if anybody have any questions, we will discuss. I will be online as well, and we discuss um on Sunday evening. We just have a little discussion. And if you if you have any services, other services you want to market, you can I'll put your information and stuff there. So any closing closing thoughts? You can tell us about um, your services. Um, anything sure. So you can check me out at Books by LR. You can check me on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. Not on Twitter yet, <laughs> but um, definitely um, if you need assistance in terms of marketing your book, if you just want to fresh up your book idea and you want to talk, if your manuscript is completed and you need to um, proofread it and edit it, etc., cetera, um, just check me out and let's just continue to work together and really continue to promote the literary works, especially within the Caribbean. It's always good to have many authors really writing from a Caribbean voice where possible. So yeah, and kudos to Caribbean Books Foundation for having this series to really encourage and promote and assist writers along the way. So do enjoy the rest of your evening. Same to you. Same to you.